Ait natith siam na siat ya, paya tana thanasne, tanitsin at kawitsin, ni kumiyakin, ait kwanas itlam nama. So um, my traditional name is Paya Tanat. I come from Cowichan tribes. Um, it's an honor to be able to see and, and connect with each of you today in this safe way. Um, I do wanna start out with um, like kind of a prayer song. Um, I think I need it probably more than anything this morning. Just, I know that when I'm nervous, it's cause I care. And so I know I can feel some nervousness this morning in terms of what I wanna share and how I'd like to connect and learn from each of you and in my connection. So this song is, um, it's, it's asking the creator for help so that I can help others. And I just love that our ancestors and our elders, they knew about self-care, right? So I have to take care of me first. And I think that's what I really hold my hands up to each one of you, because you're here, because you're taking care of you, right? And so to learn and to, to share for others, for yourself and others. Which guess you to let you know what to expect and we will jump into the meditation. So in terms of what to expect from my, my part of the sharing today um, is really about wanting to give just a little bit of an example of how the Satir model has been such a part of the work that I do within a Coast Salish Indigenous community here on Vancouver Island. And so um, I wanna say by no means is this the way or the only way or anything like that. I don't wanna paint you know, um, you know, with one brush in terms of what a painting can look like. I'm really wanting to just say this is one way that I paint. <laughs> um, I wanna say that because um, I just wanna avoid any kind of stereotypes or any kind of like, yeah. Uh, just the, there's such diversity in, in terms of the how and what we do. Um, so I want to go back, to, like way, 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 way back in time, because essentially, I believe that the reason I connected so innately to the Satir model is because it has such strong connections and in the core values of of being an indigenous person. And so I wanted to be able to kind of get you to connect through a meditation and in terms of what that can look like. So feel free to wherever you're sitting. Um, I know for me, I'm sitting on a high chair, but being able to have our feet kind of planted on the floor, kind of finding your own um, connection and your own wiggle out your, your sitting and being able to find some comfort for myself. I'm actually gonna close my eyes for this part uh, just so I can um, connect inside. And just focusing on your breathing, taking a breath in, and just letting go of anything that can, is kind of pulling your attention away from being present right now, that you are here giving yourself gratitude for for really making the time and carving out the space for yourself today in being here. And just put on the shelf anything that's kind of pulling your attention away from being just right here and right now. So we can come back to those 
you know, picking it up off the shelf when we're done. But for right now, just being entirely, bringing all of you to all of here. So just take a breath. Nice breath in and that breath out. With each breath that you take, being more and more connected and more and more present in this space. With every breath, just notice where any of the little aches and body signals that you're picking up, bringing a breath to your face, to your jaw, and relaxing each of those spaces and places. With every breath, feeling yourself more and more relaxed, bringing that relaxation all the way down your throat, your shoulders, just bringing fresh breath of the day, of the energy of Mother Earth, bringing it in through your breath and exhaling anything you don't need, any old energy bringing it in, just noticing the natural rhythm of the breath, and really letting the breath out. Carrying that all the way to the center of the core of your being and the heart and letting the breath go all the way down the backs of your legs, down your knees, all the way to your toes, bringing that calm, rejuvenating energy of the breath and allowing your feet to just push into the floor and imagine going back, back, back in time, a time where villages we're on the coasts here. Back in time, our villages were strong. So imagine your feet in the sand. And so you've landed on this beach of a Coast Salish territory. And as you look around way back in the time of villages, just see what the eyes are gifting you today. See what you can see. So the long houses made of cedar along the shores, canoes built out of cedar. You may see grannies fixing nets, fishing nets, children playing along the beach. You may see old growth all around you, all behind the village. You may see the ocean, the sky, just whatever is gifting you today. Just take that breath in. Just notice what you hear as you step way back in time. Just notice what the gift, what you hear. It could be eagles talking. It could be the wind, hearing the wind. It could be hearing the granny speaking in the traditional language. Could be hearing the children laughing, playing. Could be the sound of paddles moving in the water. Just notice what you hear. And take that gift in. It's yours for you today at this moment in time. Take a breath. And 
Notice what you smell. If you're standing here on the side of the beach with your feet in the sand, could be that salt air you smell. Could be the smell of salmon, smoked salmon, fire, campfire. Notice the smell that's gifting you today. Let's take that in. And notice what you sense in terms of your body, what's felt. How does the space and place connect to for inside of you? It could be a feeling, it could be a body experience. Just, just notice what you feel. Calmness, relaxation, connected, peaceful community, just whatever is gifting you, just take that in. One last gift. And just looking one last time around, taking in, and giving gratitude for the gifts that this place and space needed to bring to you today. Just giving thanks, feeling your feet in the sand, walking back, back, back to the future, walking back to the future. Feeling your feet in the floor, where you are in your space at this present time. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And if you'd like to write in the chat um, what that meditation was able to connect to for you. Um, peace, gratitude, um, just to breathe, to be in my body. Just be able to share in the chat where you are at this moment in time. Reverence, deep peace, safety and connection, beautiful. Calm and in the moment, seeing others, Feelings, the, feeling the gifts offered to me. Hmm. Peace, calm, relaxation, appreciation of nature, absolutely. Joy, freedom, welcome as a part of family. Hmm. Honoring ancestors in the land. Oh, just reading this lifting my heart. Beauty, beautiful, gratitude, stillness. Community, community, relaxing and slowly connecting with myself. Harmony, memories, honoring. Mm, absolutely. Thank you. And I wanted to be able to start there um, because essentially I want to say that um, working within the, and, and so I'm going to use the words Indigenous. Um, to mean kind of like a broader umbrella of working with all Indigenous people, Métis, um, First Nations, Inuit, um, as I am here in Canada. And um, specifically, though, I am First Nations, which means that I'm governed by the Indian Act still, and I'm a status Indian under the Indian Act in Canada. And so being First Nations, Inuit, um, there is different designations, but in terms of Indigenous and working within an Indigenous community, I do work here at Couch and Tribe, um, within the Couch and Tribes territory. I am from Couch and Tribes, 
and I have a private practice here, um, which is called Cedar Wellness. And I will include my contact information as well. Um, and so I want to say that the Satir model, I'm going to do the share screen, really fits within the context of working within um, <laughs> so I want to be able to kind of walk back in time that the Satir model itself um, really fits in terms of who we are as Huamok Mastimo. And so when I think of the meditation, it's bringing us back in time. And these are all very specific Coast Salish images. And Coast Salish is here on Vancouver Island a Coast Salish group that speaks a similar language and has a similar practice of long houses, um, winter ceremonies. And these ones here are very specific to my community. They're pictures of actually um, back in the day. Um, and so essentially what I wanna say is um, a very similar to the comments in the chat. Indigenous villages were strong, indigenous people had meaning, connection, understanding, clear rules, clear communication, elders, strong values, hard working, culture, tradition, language, knowledge keepers, connection of knowledge and the land, the water, the sea, the weather, independence, pride, spiritual connection, a sense of family and a political structure. So I'm, I'm not romanticizing that things weren't hard back then. There were wars and challenges and it was a hard way of life and people worked together. But our ancestors embodied connection, peace and unity. And all of these values, I believe entirely fit within the Satir model. And so it was no wonder in my um, in my undergrad, as well as the masters at UBC in social work, I was looking for a model that fit for me personally in the work I wanted to do within the First Nations community. I also want to say that um, I'm going to go through a bit of like the dark history because I want to be able to also acknowledge the why, like why um, are we working through so many pieces of um, so for example, right now, discovery of the mass graves that have been found around the Indian residential schools. Um, there is a dark history in Canada, but I wanted to touch on, um, essentially, I wanna say that when we're talking about the time of villages, that these are very specific Cowichan teachings and I, um, there's many resources that I'm gonna to share today. Some of them I'm gonna leave in the chat um, as well as um, like say, for example, this one of Cowichan teachings, I have that in, a, in just a one snap. I do have several videos, books um, that I'm gonna leave in the chat as a resource list that you can click on and they'll bring you open to uh, videos that you can watch if you're wanting um, to kind of have more information on some of the pieces that I'm gonna to cover today. So of course I can, I get so excited. I'm like, I just want to do this, 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 and this. And yet I know there's only um, you know, a certain amount of time in our day. Um, but essentially I want to say that the Cowichan teachings totally fit within the Satir model and, and, and the beliefs. When we talk about Satir beliefs, the family is a heart of life, honoring elders. Each person is important. Live in harmony with nature take care of the earth and take what you only what you need. Take care of your health, being positive, share what you have, being honest and truthful. And I'm gonna um, share, like I've, if I could almost like have this here and some of the satir beliefs that I'm gonna have, um, you'll see the alignment in what I would love to do as a PhD, <laughs> now knowing um, something that I would um, a passion that I have. 
So taking responsibility for your actions, <laughs> this is one of the main meta goals of Satir, helping one another work together for the good of all. When we think of peace among, between and within, all things are connected and giving thanks for what you have been given. I believe this also fits entirely with um, use of self, right? Entirely use of self. I'm gonna just kind of go um, quickly over why are, why, are this, why are we in the state we're in in terms of the history. So I call this Canada's dark history um, with settlement and settlers and colonization. Um, I've used this as a model and I use these images many, 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 many times throughout um, working within the First Nations community. And these are very specific to Vancouver Island in terms of the different parts of history that's impacted the, the state of our health today. So the Indian residential schools established in Nanaimo, um, the waves of smallpox and epi epidemic, um, epidemic, pandemics, wiping out 90% of our population from over 100 million, that's in North, America, in North America to 10 million. So the losses, when I do workshops around um, grief and loss, we are working with complex grief as being an Indigenous community, Indigenous person, we're already working with complex grief. So as I was talking about the BNA Act, the British North American Act gives the federal government and the federal government still legislates Aboriginal people and First Nations people today. As, as noted, I'm a status Indian under the federal government. Um, Indian reserves being established, forcing First Nations into small desolate parcels of land. So you think of the before and the after. The Indian hospitals themselves, much like the residential schools. The Indian Act prohibiting our ways of doing things, our potlatches, our longhouses. And so it was actually illegal to practice our ways, our traditional ways. And so when we look at the Indian residential schools. I wanted to be able to share a little bit about my mother attended the Kamloops. This is a picture of the Kamloops Indian Residential School, um, which my mom attended. She attended a re Indian residential school for seven years. And in that was her language, she was not allowed to speak her language. She was not allowed to associate with her brothers. She was not allowed to practice any of her traditional beliefs. And that was for over seven years. And so the impact is that many factors are responsible for the lower socioeconomic status of Aboriginal people. It's a long history of colonization, systemic discrimination, and the degrading experience from residential schools that have led to adverse multi-generational health effects on Aboriginal families. These experiences have been the root of inequality in the health and well-being of Aboriginal people. And these inequalities have continued through the generations. So the colonization and cultural deprivation has created an environment that's negatively impacted the social structures, the personal psychology and coping strategies of many Aboriginal population. I want to acknowledge that because when we talk about the satir approach, we're talking about a systemic approach that looks at all of the pieces of the history. And that's, it touches my heart because that's how can, I, how can I do the work I do within an Indigenous community without acknowledging such a rich history of village times and such a negative impact that was a legislated policy that we're still dealing with today? And um, I'm just going to stop the screen share for a moment just to be able to um, share personally 
we had Canada Day um, last Thursday. And in Canada here, we actually chose to not practice and celebrate Canada as a nation because of the Indian Residential School mass grave findings. And it was one of, it was a hard day and I've been debriefing with, with the clients ever since. Um, so I'm just gonna share where it landed on me personally as um, I live in a, a very beautiful community in Duncan and Couch and, and I, we have a very strong presence as an indigenous population, luckily, because we represent such a small population in Canada, but we have a strong presence here in Duncan. And I went to, um, we were going to go to the lake on Canada Day just to celebrate, just to be at the lake with my family, my, my daughter who's 13 and my husband. And we were going to grab some supplies in the morning and so many people were wearing these orange shirts, which is highlighting and recognition of the Indigenous um, struggle. Um, I, I don't, I, just to try to summarize it. So people were wearing orange shirts in recognition of Indigenous presence and pain. And I was about to pay and I, showing, I was showing my status card because you can get tax free and on reserve. And you never know how you're gonna be received when you show that. You never know if someone that's on the other side is like, oh, you're one of them, or, um, oh, you're trying to get a free, uh, free ticket. And so I showed it and all of a sudden I just had this teary place inside of myself. And I thought, why am I cry like why am I wanting to cry at the grocery store? And because it was I the thought that came to mind was maybe now indigenous people will get the recognition that they deserve to understand the pain, to understand the history, and to acknowledge who they are, what they've gone through, instead of this continued stereotypes and judgment. And then I thought is that what it takes is finding mass graves of children to get the recognition of the reality and the pain. Uh, I, I went, I, so I was, I went out the store and I, my husband said, why are you crying? And I said, I told him what my thoughts were and he just held me and he hugged me. And that's exactly what I needed. And then my daughter came out of the store and she said, why are you crying mom? And, and I said, the worst thing I could have said, I said, oh, nothing. And which has been such a long history of silence. Our elders who have attended the Indian residential schools would protect us by saying nothing and holding it in secrecy, their own pain. And so right away I said, wait, this is why. And I told my daughter, you know, it's so sad that I realized that everyone's wearing these orange shirts and I appreciate that, but is that what it takes? And I explained to her. And at 13, she did the same thing her dad did. She just gave me a big hug. She said, I hear you, mom. So I was glad I could catch it in the moment, and not just say nothing, not just say nothing. Oh, I'm okay, nothing, it's okay, babe. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, so I, I just, I, I, wanna, I wanna acknowledge what I did do with that. Um, we were in the car, we we're heading to the lake and um, I still was crying, I still teary. We have fires happening. We have the heat we have on Vancouver Island. We have where people are still um, trying to log and protest old growth forest. The last little bit of old growth forest they're still trying to take. Um, we had such record heats here in BC that 
um, the one town that Lytton had reached 47 point or 49.7 degrees in, in Lytton. People kept going, wow, we're record breaking record breaker. Then Lytton, this little itty bitty town burnt down. It's gone. The whole town is gone. So it's just, here's Canada Day. And how do we celebrate what is happening? And um, I just tried to do exactly what I do with my community members, you know, my clients. I just said, just let it wash over me, but it, let me feel it. And so I was feeling in the moment, the fires, the, 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 the logging, <laughs> the impact of residential schools. There's been burning of churches because of uh, the pain of First Nations people. That some communities have been burning the church on their reserve. Um, on the Malahat here, they're the encounter, encounter action to that. They're trying to burn down totem pole. To, um, and I just think it's like a the micro of what's happened in the States of just really, really voicing the pain on so many levels. And so I felt it wash over me. I had the feelings wash through me, but I, and then when I was able to really be present with my feelings, I was able to also have such deep gratitude, deep, deep gratitude. And I had such deep appreciation for my daughter, my husband, and where we were going, that we were going to the lake, that I could that I could fully be in the moment and then be in the moment of gratitude. And um, it was that day that I practiced all, almost all day in my mind mentally, uh, a prayer in Hulk Meetnam. So I wanna say that the use of self, when you talk about satire, use of self, me being me, systemic approach. Um, I do believe that satire is the original trauma-informed approach. She, she knew how to work and deal with trauma before the word trauma became the word trauma or whatever term trauma-informed is today. I just, I'm blessed that I connected with satir model to be able to have an approach that honors such deeply honors the individual and um i'm just going to go with where i'm going i'm going off script here so the satir model itself so many of you have probably seen um I want to show you the, the real piece because this is a, is a quilt. And if you can see it up close, it's actually a quilt I had um, made by a professional quilter here, um, here in Nanaimo. And I use this every day. I use this every day inside of me. It's not a tool, it's not a model, it's a part of who I am. And I do utilize it on a daily basis in explaining to, to clients. And I have a very, I wanted it to be a very visual approach because um, with storytelling and working with an indigenous community, storytelling and oral history, we, we work with images. We, we work with being able to, so when we talk about having metaphors, <laughs> Satir, all of these pieces, it just, all of these pieces entirely fit in the work and working with an indigenous community. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the screen share because I wanted to be able to say that um, having the prayer, having is decolonizing myself. So me praying, me learning my language, me, um, knowing where I come from, me knowing my roots, knowing my history, all of that fits with satir, systemic approach, all of that fits with decolonizing from the colonization and the genocide that has occurred for the last over 150 years. That was just the residential schools, but this has been much, much longer. 
So I know I have till, I have till 920. Is that right, Jen? Can you give me a nod? Okay, okay. All right. So what I wanted to do, I'll screen share. I knew I'd only get as far as I could today and that that would be okay. So I want to say that I'm going to come down here. The iceberg is a means of connecting. So the like so this picture of the quilt doesn't do it justice, does it, right? Um, and yet um, when I think about right at the very core of the iceberg self. That is a heart and soul to me. I call it many things in the work that I do within the Indigenous community. And I don't need to explain it like I might have to if I was working in a non-Indigenous community because people understand spirituality. People understand spirit, your soul and your essence. As, as the tear would call it, essence of who you are on that soul level. And so when people come into counseling, I say, this is what you expect. I use it on the very first day. This is what you expect, you know, what to expect in counseling. Um, what we'll be walking through. And when I get to you being able to connect to your core self, that light, that candle that burns bright inside of you, that light that burns bright inside of you, that's what we're wanting to connect to. That's the whole goal and whole hope of what we're doing in this space. People get it. They just get it on that visceral level. Um, and I don't know, I don't, I don't know which other model for me, having explored many different models, I don't know which model truly acknowledges that core essence of self, um, which I don't know how I could do the work in an indigenous community without that. So um, I wanted to, I know I've kind of done weaving of this throughout, but I wanted to say that um, I've utilized, you know, the core beliefs of Satir. So what I did would I would take that um, couch and teachings and I would, I would look at all of these and look at how they align, how there's so much in alignment. All of these Satir beliefs. <laughs> this is something that our elders will say entirely change is always possible they'll say this by um explaining i'm always learning an elder will you'll just think oh gosh you're an elder you know everything and they're like they'll be the first ones to say i'm always learning and to me always learning is that change is always possible um I wanted to be able to make sure that I get to this part here. Because <laughs> this is for me what it is. I want you, this is a, a Virginia Satir quote. I want you to get excited about who you are, what you are, what you have, and what can still be for you. I want to inspire you to see that you can go far beyond where you are right now. And that gives me hope when we talk about all of the pieces that are struggling and wrong in the world today. That gives me hope. There's a resource list I've caught. It's like three pages of resources. If I was to highlight one of the resources that are um, so powerful, I'm gonna put this right in the chat right now because um, you can save it. It's an amazing uh, video um, on the on a YouTube so you can click on it and start watching it right now and it's from the Indian Residential School Survivor Society um, Gary his traditional name is Squeetsy and he shares a very um, heartfelt place um, and his healing journey at the residential school and um, it explains a little bit of the why and the how and the history of the Indian Residential School. Um, one of the pieces in terms of being able to share that um, is it's been an, it's been a Canadian secret 
it's been Canada's dark past of them, um, their secret in terms of how they've treated Indigenous people for, um, for as long as they have. And so um, I'm sharing that within the Indigenous community because an example, such a clear example came of the why. Uh, a young man in his 30s, he watched that video we, we did the slides, we did the meditation, and we end, we always end on all of the resources that we still have, as we talk about Satir and the resources, right? Um, we, we still have our language, we still have our culture, we still have our elders, we still have our, our land, our traditional land, our connection to land, our connection to water, we still have all of these. And when, the, when that young man watched that video and had that session we did together, sharing together, is he said, now I get it. Now I get why my mom, my dad, and my grandparents drank. Um, they wouldn't talk about it, but I could see they were in pain and I didn't know why. And now I get it. And there was that teary place because instead of, I think that's the sy systemic approach, because when we can understand the system as a whole, then we don't need to go into that blaming stance of blaming the individual. And so what a powerful place to be able to understand the system and, and be able to connect on a heart level to his parents in such a new way. Okay. The question I had is, do you believe that the satire model makes space for a spiritual context? And if so, how? I'm trying to keep it simple. I don't want to make it complicated. <laughs> do you believe the satire model makes space for a spiritual context? And if you do, how? Thanks to all of you today. Thank you so much, Lila. 